Hey everyone, it's your Federico here and welcome to a new video. Maybe put a like on the way in, this would be much appreciated. And today in this video we are not going to talk about uh, some jitter stuff, we are going to talk about how to script uh, uh, max objects creation into JavaScript. So this is going to be about JavaScript and creating objects with uh, the dispatcher object within, from within JavaScript. But first I want to make a little announce, which is uh, we got 10,000 uh, subscribers on the channel for the first time in history, amazing max stuff. 10,000 subscribers, uh, which is really, um, is really cool. I'm super grateful and happy to pass this threshold, this milestone or whatever we want to call it. But uh, let's not um, dwell anymore into the subject and uh, let's get into the patch. Um, of course, we are going to need a JS object, JavaScript object, if we want to write some JavaScript code. So I will call it like a patch scripter or something, patch scripter.js. I'm going to open the file. I'm going to give it the auto watch equal one attribute. So this is basically setting an attribute for the JavaScript object, which will make it in a way that when we open this JavaScript file with an external editor, it's going to um, it's going to modify also the file opening the JavaScript object in Max. So this we need. I'm going to save it now, probably on the desktop. I'm going to save also this patch on the desktop as well as um, js script test. So if I double click on the JavaScript object uh, now, it's going to open automatically Visual Studio Code. This is my preferred external editor. So now I can simply code inside this external editor and the, the file is going to be update, updated also in the max patch. Good. So how do we create uh, objects in uh, Max uh, automatically? So basically, I'm not talking about pressing N on the keyboard and write the name of the object. I'm talking about using the dispatcher object and basically passing it some messages in order to create objects inside the patch. In fact, if we go into the help file of this object and we go into scripting, we can see that we can actually create new object by sending messages to this, uh, to this max object, which is pretty cool. Uh, but it's a bit, um, it's not so comfortable to do it in max itself. I mean, it's okay, but it's better to do this in JavaScript because we have a lot more tools. We can deal with the lists of objects in a much easier way. So I always prefer when scripting um, patches and graphical user interfaces in Max, uh, I always prefer to do it in JavaScript. So let's see how we can do that. Good. So let's create a function in our JavaScript file and call it like something very simple, like create object. This is just going to be kind of a test. We are going to do and uh, we are going to simply create uh, some objects just to see how we can do that. Well, first of all, we need a dispatcher object also inside JavaScript. So we can create a variable and say bp is going is equal to this dot patcher. So, oops. So in this case, it, the object is not called this patcher, but actually it's called this dot patcher. So patcher is a property of the this object, which is refers, I guess, to, to the main uh, max object inside uh, JavaScript. Cool. So if we want to create a new object, we can do like this. Let's create a variable uh, to which we assign uh, our object. And uh, let's call it, for example, max object and say max object is equal to p dot new default. That's one of the two ways we have to create objects with this uh, patcher object. We can use the def uh, new default object, or we can use another method, which is called new object, which is a bit slightly less, uh, slightly more complex. So for the moment, we're going to use the new default method, which works like this, basically it takes a position for the object, which I guess is the leftmost uh, corner of our object top left or maybe it's the center of the object not really sure but uh, let's for example say that we want to create these at a position of 100 pixels uh, from the right from the left border and 100 pixels from the seal uh, ceiling of our patch and we want to of course say which number uh, which object we want to create so we have to give the name of the object we want to create so we're going to create a number object just an integer number object and uh, we're also going to set its value to something. So we can do it like this, max object.set. So now we can use basically 
um, properties of this max object that we just created, we can call um, these methods basically as functions inside JavaScript. So since the number object, the integer number object, as you can send it a message set and then we can set a value to it, right? We can do the same thing in JavaScript and uh, we can say, for example, set a value of 10. Uh, by calling the method as a function inside JavaScript. So great. Uh, let's see if this actually works. So let's create a message box uh, right inside the name of the function we want to call and we call it. Let's see if it actually worked. And great, it seems to be working. Uh, every time I click on this function, it will create a new object. Um, so that's pretty cool. And if I want to delete them now, I have to basically select them and delete them. But let's see how we can delete them from within JavaScript code. So in a programmatical way, let's see how we can do that. Go back to my code. And then I want to say delete objects, like delete all the objects. So let's create a function and say delete objects. Well, um, in order to delete all the objects, we should have a way to basically, we should have a container where they're all contained. So every time we create a new one, we can just put in that container. And when we want to delete them, we just have to go through all the objects inside this container and delete them. So as a container, we're going to use an array inside JavaScript. So we're going to create an array, call it objects. And when we created our max object here, we can basically do like this, objects.push max obj. So we basically, every time we create this, um, a new object, we push it inside this array. So now this array contains that object. So when we want to delete all of them, we can simply say for bar obj in objects. So for every uh, element in the array objects, we can say p dot remove obj. And it should delete. Uh, that specific object. So it's going to do it for all the objects in the patch. So it's going to delete um, all of them. Um, before we do that, let me maybe, instead of creating uh, the objects all in the same position, we can create them in a random position in the patch by creating, for example, a math random multiply this by 500 for the X position. So they're going to be all in a position between zero and 500 because math random gives us a random number between um, zero and one. We can do the same for the Y. Good. And maybe we can also give them a random number between zero and, oh, sorry, between zero and 100, something like that just to have a bit more variety. So let's give it a try. Uh, let's create a bunch of objects. Cool, there they are. Uh, let's now remove them with our function, which we called delete objects. So delete objects. Let's see if this works. And of course it doesn't work because they've been uh, dumb. That's not uh, how arrays work. Um, silly me. Sometimes it makes some very dumb errors. It's actually, we have to say the name of the array. And then we have to say, okay, we want to remove from this array, this element of the array, and not just remove the index of this element in this array, because obj is basically the index of the element in the array, which is completely dumb to remove the index. We want to remove the object at this index, right? So now, if I dare say so, it's going to work. So let's give it a try. Let's create a bunch of stuff, delete, and they're all gone. Our friends are all gone. Let's create a bunch more, a lot of them, which would be really pretty annoying to delete manually, but we can just click on delete objects and they're all gone. Cool. So now instead of creating these objects in a random position, um, let's create them like in an ordered uh, way. So basically like, uh, let's create a little uh, list of uh, number objects. So let's do like this. Let's create a new function and, and say create uh, Let's call it create a number list or something. Create a number list sounds good. And we are going to call this function that was called create object. We are going to call it create number object. And uh, we will need an index as an argument because we're going to pass the index uh, from the create number list function, which we are going to use then to set an epsilon, uh, an epsilon position for our number. So basically we want to say that we're going to put this uh, at an x position of, for example, 100 on the on the x axis, and then we're going to multiply index by 100, and we're going to also give it an offset of 100. So actually, let's multiply this by 50 plus an offset of 100. So they will start to be created starting from 100 from the ceiling, 
and then they're going to move uh, vertically at interval of 50 pixels right and let's give it a random number that's that's all that's all good so let's go now in the create a number list function and say uh, let's create a for loop for for bar e equals zero e less than let's say 10 so we create 10 numbers e plus plus and then let's call our num our function so create number object it's always good to create a lot of little functions that do one specific thing, right? We could write, of course, this whole code inside here instead of just calling this function, but it's much neater and actually makes the code much more readable uh, if we create a lots of little functions that um, that do a single thing, or at least this is how I like to code because, uh, yeah, this is just how it makes sense for me. But uh, if you are anything like me, it will make sense for you too, so I can highly recommend that. So we will pass e as a, which is i, sorry for my pronunciation, is actually i, not e, uh, as our index. And uh, good, let's give it a try if this actually works. So instead of create object, we say now create number list. Right, that's how we call this function, create number list. Yeah, so let's give it a try. Cool, uh, there they are. And if we want to delete them, we go with delete objects. They are a bit too wide apart. So to make this space smaller, we can uh, multiply this by a, a smaller number. And we can maybe maybe less, um, less offset from the ceiling of the patch. So let's see how it looks now. Uh -huh, too, too, few, too few space between each other. So we can say, for example, 25. Let's give it a try. Yeah, this looks about right. Great. And uh, cool. So now we created them. So this could be the starting of uh, the creation of our interface for a specific uh, abstraction or for uh, some specific tool that we are creating uh, in Max. Uh, for example, this, uh, we could attach, uh, we could assign a comment next to every one of these, uh, of these numbers. Uh, let's actually do it. Uh, let's actually do it. Uh, Let's, let's create a little comment next to these numbers. So let's create another function, uh, which we call... So like a little, uh, a little description of what this number is for. So let's call it create comment object, right? And we need the index as well. And uh, we basically copy that code, but instead of number, we say comment. And instead of an offset of 100, let's give it an offset of 30 from the left. So it's going to be on the left of uh, our uh, number object. And let's set it to a value of... Uh, uh, there should be some text, like everyone should have a different text. But uh, for example, we could say frec plus uh, our index. So this is going to be like frequent 0, frequent 1, frequent 2, until frequent frequency 9. So yeah, this could be a good example of how we can create automatic labels for, for some objects. Uh, let's pass this, the name of this function here. So we're going to first create a comment and then create a number object. So let's see if this works. Create a number list. Great. So now this is our frequent zero. This is frequent one and so on. Uh, we left a bit too much uh, space between the object and the label. So let's maybe give it an offset of uh, 60 from the left, uh, the leftmost wall of the patch. So yeah, this looks this looks about right. They could be a bit more distant. So instead of 60, let's say 50 then. And then it's the last thing I'm going to do, I promise. Right. And this looks pretty neat. Um, of course, we can connect then also this object uh, automatically to another object, either that is already in the patch or we create through JavaScript. Uh, maybe we're going to see that in the next video, but it's actually pretty easy to, to understand how this can be done by checking the help file of this patcher. If you go into scripting, there is also a connect function, so we can do this very easily in JavaScript. Um, okay, maybe I show you. Maybe we just uh, connect like uh, all these numbers together for some reason. So we're going to connect the first one to the second and the second to the third and so on. She's very... Uh, I don't know why you would do that in a real uh, situation, but uh, in this case... In this case, it's going to be a good exercise to do that. So let's create a new function. As I said, I like to create a lot of small functions that do little things and let's call it connect objects. And it's going to be obj1 and it's going to be obj2. 
So basically want to want, what we want to do is to say p dot connect obj1 input 0 uh, outlet 0 to obj2 input 0. So the leftmost input. Right. And so what we want to do is basically here. Uh, instead of our for loop, we want to say if so if i is greater than zero. So that's because we don't want to connect at the first pass because there are not yet two objects. If we just created one object when i is equal to zero, it's not going to work. We need at least two objects. So I want to say at least at the second pass of the for loop, we want to connect then the current object to the object that's been created in the first in the pass before. So if i is greater than zero. Uh, we want to say connect our um, our objects are now inside our objects list right so objects i minus zero uh, which is the previous object we created with the current object which is objects i right because if this is number one objects i minus zero so one minus zero is going to be the object which is at index zero connected to the object that is at index one. And actually, every time we start this, uh, we, we call the create a number list function, we should actually erase, erase the previous content of the of the array. So we have to do f this every time before we basically create the new objects, we have to delete the old ones. So we can call our function, which is uh, delete objects. So we first call the function delete objects. And then we basically assign our objects list to an empty new array. Great. So every time we have to do that. Uh, all right. So this is clearly not working. These objects are actually connected to each other, which is uh, wrong. That's not what we want. Oh, gosh, I'm sorry, guys. I don't know what's wrong with me, but uh, I wrote I minus zero. So it's, of course, the same object. Gosh, I'm sorry. This is really disgraceful actually should be i minus one, of course, because it's the previous iteration of the for loop. Sorry, it's the emotion of making a new video after so much time, I guess. So let's give it another try. And uh, oh, of course, of course, the comment object is also inside our list, of course. So this, of course, is going to connect them to the comment object. Uh, which is not what we want. We wanted to connect the number of objects one after the other. So let's create actually a different uh, list for the comment objects. And uh, when we create a new comment object, we push it inside this comment objects list, not inside the objects list. Set the comment objects. Great. So when we delete the objects, we have to do also it for the for the other lists for the comment objects list. Right, so this should work as well. And uh, let's give it a try. So create numbers. And there we go. They all connected one to the other. It's a bit annoying that the comment boxes go on top of the number boxes. But yeah, there we are. They're all connected. The number boxes are connected together. So let's do it again. Right. So just to show you how we can connect the number boxes together, or whatever object actually, from within JavaScript, Great. So, yeah, I hope this was not too confusing. Just a bit confusing is OK, but too confusing is not OK. So let me know if it was uh, too much confusing. Let me know if um, something is unclear. Uh, this tool, uh, this, this, this scripting uh, from within JavaScript is really great. There is, of course, in the um, reference of Max, there is, of course, a section about scripting with JavaScript in Max which will tell you about uh, these kind of things that I showed you and much more. But I'm also going to uh, go a bit on with this uh, little uh, scripting series, I guess, and uh, show you a couple more tricks that uh, we can do when scripting objects from within JavaScript. So um, let me know if you liked the video, whatever comments, I'm happy to, to answer critics. Uh, I take them gladly. So yeah, uh, again, I'm super happy for the 10,000 subscribers. And uh, thank you very much again for watching. There is also my Patreon channel, which is uh, where you can find a lot of patches and stuff, which is uh, worth a look if you are into these kind of things, like Max, I mean. And uh, see you soon in the next video. Ciao.